I just read a comment from my first episode saying something like, in the next episode he's going to have a jetpack with no explanation of how he got it. You know what? I can relate to that. A lot of modern series are kind of like that, just massive, massive, massive progression into automation, and then you have everything by like, episode 4. However, this is Vault Hunters. Things are different. Things are going to take time. I mean, we are in episode 6 today, and one of my proudest possessions is my pile of wheat. Yes, I love it very much. But speaking about progression, that is what I want to do today. In fact, I would like to mega progress today. So, the plan for today is to run... Five... Five vaults? If I die, that may not be doable. And if we get a tough recipe, that may not be doable. But if everything goes to plan, we are at a place where we are looking quite good with resources. I got seven golden apples. Now, the very first thing I have to do is get more vault rocks, because that altar is looking very empty, and I am completely out of them. So, back down to the mine I go. I haven't been here for a while. And I forgot torches. <laughs> Classic. I should just put a chest down here with a massive amount of torches. That would be super helpful. And you know what? Let's bring the fortune pickaxe with us. And wood. Always bring wood when mining. And as a reminder, Voltrox can be found at Y level 5 to 11. Hello there! Yes, that's one. I should really start taking advantage of this. Compressing my blocks. Can really save an amazing amount of space. That's my entire inventory in 11 blocks of <laughs> compressed stone. Oh, more diamonds. I think it's just me, but it feels like the durability of items in Vault Hunters run out a lot quicker than normal. I really need an XP farm. Number two. And three. And that's gonna be the end of my mining session. Hopefully we don't get super unlucky and get at least five vault trucks here. With fortune three, I believe the most I can get is four per ore rock. But as opposed to vanilla ores, you can also get zero. So here we go. That's one. Terrible start. Ooh, that's two. Oh, we need to hit a two here at least. Come on. That uh, doesn't look like a two. Oh, that's unfortunate. I guess if I get through four crystals, I'll get to the next one. Now, for the big moment, I'm hoping to get a recipe that we can make with the resources we have. Ah, lucky roll. Oh, and that is why we save our wither skulls. Oh, that's a little bit worse. We need to find a jungle. And I don't know why this keeps happening, but my map has just reset. I have explored so much more than this. Oh well, I remember that I went this direction when I was searching for other things, so I guess maybe if I cross the swamp and go further this way, maybe I can find a jungle there. And by the way, I gotta say, this was a pretty successful mining session all in all. I mean, I only spent 17 minutes and I came out with quite the resources. Elytra on and time to head east. Oh, a village. Oh, treasure. Oh, isn't this ironic? This is this is jungle planks. I wonder if these can have saplings in them. Nope, but a globe. Ah. Huh? It spins. I don't know if they're for anything specifically, but they they look cool. Aha. Wait, this is an empty map. That's not That's not a treasure map. I got scammed. These pirates suck. Can't even make a treasure map. Oh, look at this! Oh, this is a... This is an Omega find. And it's kind of close to home as well. There's my fort. And there's a mushroom island. I can't believe that. This is going to be very useful. And potentially... Potentially... Aww. This could be our permanent home. Hello, friends. Potential home base. House. I'm pretty sure I'd already explored this area, but I definitely hadn't explored this area, so... I think I'm just gonna head north. What is this? There is more! There is more Mushroom Island! That's not even connected. This is ridiculous. What a seed! 
This is a randomly selected seed, and I haven't even looked at it in a map. That's crazy. Maybe that is a better home, actually, than the other one. Now all I need is a jungle. My theory is, if I just continue flying in one direction, I should eventually come across one. <laughs> Although, I have explored very weirdly. <laughs> it's not a good sign to have an extreme hills biome. I don't think, at least. Oh, 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 oh! Yes! Oh, I didn't even see it first. I thought it was a dark oak forest! Uh, granted, it's about 4,000 blocks away from home, but it's a jungle nonetheless. Oh, and I didn't bring an axe. <laughs> oh, get jungle logs, it says. Bring axe? No. <laughs> Melons, jungle logs, saplings, and cocoa beans. That is a very, very important find as well. Because they can be in the altar. Cocoa beans can be in the altar. Okay, time to head back home, and my elytra is not looking great. Ooh, pit stop. <laughs> well, that's not, that's not great. Please last, elytra, please last. It's honestly not looking good. It's not looking good at all. It's gonna break. Unless... Very sorry about this. Fingers crossed. I think a thank you cows is in order. We're home. <laughs> we are fort. <laughs> we are fort. We are fort. And with four new friends. And a globe. Hey, check out my globe. It's very, it's very cool. And here we go. Carrots, skulls, jungle logs, and one piece of coal. Brilliant. Now once again, please alter, be kind. Six cakes. And did this altar come with a completed iron pillar? I mean, it did trigger lucky, which by the way is a 10% chance and we've had three out of six? Yes, six. And that's super lucky in itself. Anyway, this one, this one is a good recipe. We have the sand, sand. We have the snow, balls, and we even have a couple of cakes to be exact. And of course I'm not gonna bake a cake. After all, you're not watching Etho. I am going to buy cake. Thank you, sir. One, two, and that is another crystal. Nice. Please be a good one, please be a good one, please be a good one. Oh, 533 basalt. Do I even have any basalt at this point? Yes, 12. I have 12 basalt. <laughs> And I guess I should complete the other things. Poisonous potato, 11 iron ingots, and the wheat. I believe we got a pretty unlucky and abnormally high amount of basalt required. But honestly, 521 is not going to be that big of a problem. A bigger problem is that I have to, I have to once again repair. <laughs> repair my pickaxe and my gear and... I've said this before, I should really invest in some kind of... Some kind of XP farm. A gold farm, for example, would be pretty beneficial to build. Not today, though. Today is mega progression, and today carrots are supremacy. Now, I don't know if this is true, but it feels like if I buy something more expensive, I get more experience. Yes, that did it. Aha! Fully repaired Silky Boy. 512 basalt, you say? Oh no, my nether map has also reset. That's really annoying. I don't know why that has happened. Aha, basalt. This should be pretty fast. There's a very helpful thing in one of the mods in this mod pack that counts for you if you hold the block in your hand or offhand. 547, 553. <laughs> it's very helpful for people like me who can't math at all. Wait for it, wait for it. Oh, come on, what was that? What? <laughs> what? Cursed ghast! I kind of have to. Uh, yes, got it. Altar versus Iskal. Three, zero. By the way, that was not up. That was not me trying to intimidate the dear altar. Please don't. Please don't think that I intimidated you. 800 netherrack. <laughs> But this should be completely doable. Eight diamonds. And I've saved every saddle that I've come across on my exploration. So that is absolutely fine. And thanks to our special friend, Snowballs. Easy. 
This is a little bit of a deja vu, but honestly, 800 netherrack shouldn't be that big of a deal. This genuinely took less than two minutes. 951 netherrack. I love vein miner. <laughs> this is like feeding an evil child. Yes, have all of your favorite candy. That is crystal number four. And actually, I feel like I should get a fifth crystal right now. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, that's... Wow. Wow, that is incredible luck right there. I don't really know what to say. That was, that was, that was, that, that was lucky. Now hopefully we don't get zero when we break this down. Maybe I should have fortunate it in the mine. Ah, three. Oh, that was three. We meet again, Alter. More netherrack, you say? Oh, and a nautilus shell. That's actually going to be a little bit tricky. Glowstone, potatoes. More taters. And more candy for the evil child. And I guess it's time to find some drowned friends. Oh, another shipwreck. And this time the pirates has done their job. Oh, this is gonna be one of them tricky. Oh, I found it. I think that's a drowned temple. I hear a trident boy. Hello. I should have made some doors or something. Ah, uh, give me the trident, please. Oh, oh. Oh my, okay, okay, okay. That is unbelievable. It's only the second ever Trident boy I've killed. That's crazy. I just realized, smite five, strong, very strong. Hello there. <laughs> Have you seen anyone, anyone holding a Nautilus shell around here? No? Okay, <laughs> that's not a camp, but that's, that is a, a very long pillar of gravel, okay. Oh, I just remembered the trick to this. F3 and B? Yes. Hitbox is shown, now I can see you. Nautilus? Nope. Nope. Oh, another trident man. Double lucky? Nope. That's kelp. Oh, that's kelp. That's not a no- I thought the man was holding a Nautilus shell. Come on. Fishing rod, nothing. And another trident. Ugh. Nope. I don't remember them being this rare to find. Oh! Oh! What? What is this? Bonkers. I just had a look at the wiki, and apparently you can fish for Nautilus shells. The only problem is, is that I don't like fishing in Minecraft. I mean, come on, you just stand here for a while and then... A salmon. <laughs> uh. And apparently, according to the wiki, you can get Nautilus shells from wandering traders. I don't think I've ever seen that trade. And that actually makes wandering traders kind of useful, I guess. Huh. There is a 3% chance in Java that you come across one that's holding a Nautilus shell, and that is the primary way of obtaining them. Yes! 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 Well, Nautilus shell acquired. Time to go home. And I really can't believe that I'm coming home with two tridents. That's unreal, right? That's unbelievable. Take that, Walter. Crystal number five. Wait, where did it go? Hello? Ah, nice. <laughs> that scared me for a second. Ah, look at how beautiful they are. I'd like to say this is, this is great success. I do, however, have a little bit of a problem. Time. In average, a vault is 25 minutes long, and out of those 25 minutes, I'd like to stay as long as possible as it gives you more experience, and obviously more chance to loot. I've got five vaults to run down, and we've got about 10 minutes remaining on this video, because I don't really feel like making a video that's like two and a half hours long. So I thought I'd make a montage of my vaults. Now, obviously, I haven't ever done a montage of a vault run before. I mean, this is episode six, it's a, it's a brand new series. It makes sense. I pick you. Here we go, I guess. Montage time. Oh yes, healing potions first. Ah, unlucky. 
Apart from the unlucky modifier, it started off pretty good. An obelisk in the first room and lots of netherrack. And then I came across a village room. Village rooms can be extremely generous. Dig down and you'll find a stronghold. And if you're lucky, that stronghold can contain an end portal frame. In addition to a lot of gilded chests, if you're super lucky, it can contain two end portal frames. Which mine did. The only problem was, I didn't have any eyes of Ender. Not gonna lie, I should have remembered to bring some in. After all, I've developed this pack and played it for a very long time. Anyway, knowing that I have the opportunity to open two end portal frames, my quest began. This vault was now all about finding ender pearls and blaze rolls. I fought off hordes of zombies, a tanky spider, and shot a creeper in the face. I found a tennis altar with blaze rolls and, ah, not a shell. And my next chest, ender pearl. So back down I went, got the IFN and, and completed the portal. That gave me a lot of gilded chests with a lot of goodies in them and not a single one, not a single one was trapped, which is quite rare. I think I, I, I lucked out. With that, my quest continued for another ender pearl. Imagine getting two of the end portals in one run. It would be absolutely amazing. I looted as much as I could, as fast as I could, and then I started to get trapped. Trapped, 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 and silverfish. Ugh, I hate silverfish. In my search, I visited an aquarium, broke a clownfish, before heading on and finding another obelisk. And then I came across a mine, the rarest room in Vault Hunters. It can contain a lot of ores, or it can be abandoned, like this one. I took up my disappointment on a creeper before continuing the quest to find another Ender Pearl. And there it was. Ender Pearl. The only problem was, this was on the other side of the vault. I moved as quickly as I could back to the village room, only to realize that my time was running out. I freaked out for a second and then started rushing back. But don't worry, I made it, with 21 seconds remaining. Great success! And look at the loot! This was an incredible vault! <laughs> Nautilus. So, again, not making this mistake again though. <laughs> No modifiers, but six obelisks. With six obelisks, this vault was a little bit more vaulty. Oof! Yes, that was scary. I'm not really here to focus on bosses, so the six obelisks didn't really bother me. Instead, I focused on looting. And ores. I also focused on finding ores. And more loot. And then some more looting. I found an Idona altar wanting me to kill five tagged mobs. One, two, three, four, five. Aha! Next, I came across a crystal cave. Remember this room? It's fantastic for ores. So, ores, more ores, lots of ores. And ancient debris. Ancient debris is also an ore, right? I was, however, taking quite a bit of damage in this vault. I really think that even though there are more zombies in the vaults, spiders are so tanky and I may be better off with sharpness. I got in a bit of a pickle, had to use my last healing potion, and having emptied most ores from the crystal room, I moved on. I found another Idona altar. Again, five mobs. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Hello there. I said four. Five. Ah? Thought I'd do some extra end looting before poison. I spammed down my hearty apples and headed for the exit. That was a little bit more hostile. I don't have a single healing potion left, but the loot is looking strong. Let's see how this goes. Oh, and one more thing. Four of you, four of you, there, there, and there. Nice. Double the size. Oh, this looks good. Lucky, 
a very good modifier. And let me explain what it does. Every time you open a chest inside a vault, there is a 50% chance that you get one extra loot slot. So if you would normally get, say, six slots, this would give you seven slots 50% of the time. It's basically very good. And while Lucky does not affect the rarity of the chests, you know, common, rare, epic, omega, it does mean that there will be more loot. So, chests. Lots and lots of chests. These include altar chests. And even though my focus in this vault was definitely to loot as much as I could, the crystal cave once again spawned. So, or? Yes. Ores. Ooh. I then found a village room. This one with a lot more buildings. Friendly tip, don't sleep in the vault. I eagerly, with the help of my bow, got myself down to the stronghold and... Aha! A new end portal frame. And this time, I had what it took. And with Lucky, theoretically, I got six more items than I would have without Lucky in this room. I also made sure to loot all the other gilded chests down in the stronghold. There are quite a few. Before realizing that my time was nearly over. And I had no idea where I were. And slowed... Kinda sucks a little bit. It makes me, well, slow. I decided to big brain it and eat some candy bars. Ah, that speed. Not wanting to risk anything, I decided to head out. Wow, wow, wow. Again. Aha. <laughs> nope. Okay, okay. Let me explain. Difficult as we know increases the mob levels by 15. And we've seen trap before, explosions, poison, mob traps. Crowded though adds four mobs spawning around the player at all times. And furious, well furious increases the mob's damage by 50%. Vault number four was a death trap. <laughs> Strategic exit. <laughs> Ooh, now that's more like it. Personal space reduces the amount of mobs spawning around the player, and if I have no other modifiers increasing them, that means that no mobs will spawn around me as I run through the vault. Now that of course doesn't void the source of evil, mob spawners will still spawn mobs. Even though this vault had six obelisks, I was kind of thinking that this may be an ideal situation to take on our second boss. First I had to do some looting, Ooh. which I very quickly regretted. Not again! Not again! Ah! Oh. Yes, still have to fix the bug that there are explosion traps before level 25. Because yes, it is a bug. After barely surviving the wild wild west, I decided I'm gonna give it a go. So with candy bars in my belly and max speed, I started chasing down obelisks. I of course stopped every now and again and looted a chest or two, <laughs> because looting is very fun. I found an obelisk in the aquarium room and thought about the idea of fighting the boss there. Because bosses, like babies, can't swim. But as I explored the water and nearly lost my breath, I realized that neither can I. No depth strider. So I continued looking, activated my fifth obelisk in the cherry blossom room where we fought the boss last time, and then came across the dream. An X mark treasure room. Well, it can be. A treasure room. You see, if you dig down in this room, in the middle, where the X is, you can either get a cave filled with ores, a cave with gilded chests, or a cave with hundred mobs. I didn't feel like I was ready to take that risk. However, it would make the ideal spot to fight a boss. I had to look around for a little bit, before fully deciding that I'm gonna do it. I chewed down my hearty apples. Six yellow hearts is max without a talent. Ate my cobalt apple, as it gave me fall damage and fire immunity, and summoned the boss. Another soul blaze. I then realized that I forgot to eat my power bar, which is very important. I took some nasty hits as I was chewing it down, but I wasn't going to let that stop me. After all, this was an ideal situation. And the soul blaze quickly turned to ashes. 
Easy! Aha! Oh. <laughs> that was the best possible circumstances to fight that specific boss. Enough hearty apples, a healing vault, fire immunity from my cobalt apples, my power bar, and sharpness 5 on my sword. Soul Blaze, sit down. And we have a brand new boss crate. Let's see. Oh, that's a fancy bow, a peri apple, a resistance apple, a lot of emeralds, and 19 star essence in one crate. What does the trader give us? Oh, legendary treasure. I believe that may be one of the rarest things you can get on a trader before level 50. And there we go. All five crystals completed. I mean, I mean, yes, one of them. One of them was an insta bail. And I gotta say, it's gone very well. I have taken my time to organize, and this is the Vault Rarities. And if my math is correct, we actually have enough to make our first knowledge star. Yes, star core. Four of these, and then they go there, these go there, and you there. Nice. And then we turn these into shards. One more. And this is a knowledge star. Mega progress. I've also gained 27 vault cookies in addition to becoming level 9 from running the vaults themselves. Time to add another pile. Oops, I <laughs> put all the rare ones in the bottom. Let's not, let's not cover them over. Fun sweet. Aha! And there's not even a party in the back of this. Well, well, okay. You go there. Pile design. Ten statues. And even though it doesn't look like any of them have any specifically good drop, as I've said before, it's still very valuable to save these for later. Look at them! Oh, hold on. Danny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 10 traders as well. I may actually be at the point where I have to start organizing vending machines. I know we have that legendary treasure, but... Oh! <gasps> Money is selling a pickerang! I wonder if I have enough to buy it out. So, 9 bronze turns into 1 silver, and 9 silver turns into 1 gold. It's gonna be close, but yes, yes, yes. Now the question is, do I want to spend all of my resources of buying on buying a pickerang? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> Efficiency and sharpness. I'm breaking mending. Hello. Pickerang is basically like a pickaxe and a sword. And I guess as an axe. Hello. <laughs> Now, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but it's fantastic to mine with. And more importantly, you can vein mine with the pickerang. <laughs> I love it so much. It's fantastic. In order to make this viable in the vault store, I should probably put silk touch on it as well. 43 mystery boxes, you say? Imagine if I get another pickerang now. Maybe I should have opened these before, before buying. I'm gonna put all of my stuff in this barrel, so I can see what I got. No pickerang, but a healthy amount of random assorted stuff. That's a lot of bones. And a lot of gold. Wow. You know what time it is? Cookie time! I can definitely feel how it's getting slower and slower to level up, but there we go. Level 12. And five unspent skill points. Very exciting indeed. I'm definitely going to get myself haste too. Yes. Sorry, Floor, but I got I got a bit excited. Another level in dash would be pretty good. Lower cooldown and better power, and I use it quite a lot. Yes. I feel like one of the things holding me back is experience gain. Could go to 150% extra. Yes. Yes, that is definitely a lot faster to get levels. It's very fun to make progress in Vault Hunters. And speaking about progress, this is the big moment. Let's chew the Knowledge Star down. I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna take. 
<laughs> so I'm gonna wait with my knowledge star until next episode. No, it's not a cliffhanger. It's a let's see what you guys say that I should focus on in the comment section type of hanger. <laughs> On that note, this has been an extremely lucrative episode, and I really do hope that you've enjoyed it, including my montages, which by the way took about an hour to make per Vault Run, except for Vault 4, that didn't take that long to make. If you did, please do hit the like button down below, and if you're brand new, consider subscribing, and I will see you in the next episode. <laughs>